one of the most common themes we hear from DevOps teams is that there's often a lack of standardization in their organization around how infrastructure is deployed. They're finding that Terraform alone isn't enough that you need to address bottlenecks like reusability and security. Otherwise, it's wild, wild west where there's no reason or rhyme why your code's not dry. D-R-Y, don't repeat yourself. And instead of grabbing components off the shelf, we're writing the same Terraform code 50 different ways. And that's a barrier to adoption. So let me show you the solution. <laughs> to begin, I'd like to elucidate n Zero's application structure, because this is what enables us to deliver that self-service infrastructure provisioning in DRY your code. N0 has a four-tier hierarchy. First, we have our organization, the logical grouping of the totality of your data. Templates refers to the Terraform, Terragrunt, Kubernetes, and other infrastructure as code framework modules that you've written and stored in your Git repo. Projects and subprojects are logical groupings of what would be business units and teams. For example, you might have a core payments team project with subprojects for each of the dev, test, staging, and production environments. An environment in N0 is not a dev, test, staging, or prod environment. An environment in N0 is a deployment of your templates. This is what enables us to reuse variables. For example, you may have an organization variable such as a Vault token or a secrets manager that is the same throughout the entire org. You may have template specific variables such as the size of an EC2 instance that you'll enable as a drop down so that devs can select from predetermined options. Each project will typically have the same VPC ID and then you can have specific and unique environment variables that are for that deployment only. Here we are in the N0 dashboard. Today I'm going to walk you through the self-service provisioning workflow as if I was David the developer. I've logged in to one of the SAML options and I'm part of the Acme Financial Services organization. You can have multiple organizations as needed for better separation of duties. As David the developer, I'm part of the core payments team. So I have access to the core payments project. I also have access to the core payments non-production and production sub-projects. As a developer, I've been granted permissions through our role-based access control to deploy and approve in non-production, but in order to deploy to production, I would need manager approval. I need some front-end servers, so I'm going to go ahead and deploy in non-production. To deploy our resources, I'm going to click Create New Environment, and here I can select from templates that the DevOps team has made available to me. That way, I don't even need to understand or know Terraform. But if I did, I could click Review Code, see that it links to our Git repo, where a Terraform module is stored, and inspect our code. I'm going to go back to N0 and click Run Now. And here we have several options. First, if I was working on a feature branch, I can select a specific branch to deploy from. If I wanted to, I could use N0's remote backend and not have to worry about state. All I need to do is specify and designate a unique workspace name. If I wanted to keep this deployment updated at all times, I can redeploy in every push of the Git branch, and I can also run Terraform plan on pull requests targeting this branch to enable GitOps workflows. One of the most common problems is detecting infrastructure drift. By writing a simple cron expression, I can run a Terraform plan and compare the difference with my desired configuration. I can also leave a deployment comment for better collaboration so my team members can know exactly why and what I'm deploying. For those of you with ephemeral environments, we have a concept of a time to live. Here, I can select from a drop down that the DevOps team has made available to me of how long an environment can live for. This also prevents orphaned resources that aren't being used. As we discussed earlier, here we have our reusable variables. For example, here we have a VPC ID that is a read-only variable. I can't overwrite or make changes to this variable. Here we have our instance type. 
and I can select from predetermined options that the DevOps team has made available to me how small or how large my instance can be. Finally, we have regex validation for variables, so I can't add a variable that will invalidate our configuration. We also have sensitive variables like secrets that are sensitive and cannot be overwritten or seen by David the developer. Finally, we have approval workflows, so I'm going to leave this box unchecked. With that, I can click run and see my deployment start. We can inspect any of the stages of our deployment by expanding these blocks. Here, Terraform is being initialized. During the tag resources stage, M0 will automatically tag all of your resources. Here we can inspect our Terraform plan in a prettified, more human readable version, or if you'd prefer, the original Terraform output. As David the developer working in core payments non-production, I can approve my own deployment. But if this was a real deployment going out to production, I would need manager approval. We can see cost estimation using InfraCost. Here our Terraform apply is running. And just like that, David the developer has provisioned his own resource. There are a lot of other features that we can talk about, like state management, cost monitoring, and role-based access control. But for today, that's a job well done. And that's the self-service provisioning workflow. Remember, Terraform alone isn't enough. To address the bottlenecks in reusability, security, and adoption, you need a management layer. That's what N0 is. Merry meet, merry part, so we'll merrily meet again. Till next time, get back out.